Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Activate Her with me, Sally Goodwin. Good morning. Welcome to Activate Her with me, Sally Goodwin. Five minutes late, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Apologies for being late, but here I am. Welcome to Activate Her with me, Sally Goodwin, on this beautiful Friday morning in Cape Town. A beautiful Friday morning and it is Friday the 29th of December 2023 and it is the 17th of Tevet 5784. Welcome to Activate Her with me Sally Goodwin. Good morning gorgeous Candice. Welcome my friend. It is so good to see you this morning. Good morning, wonderful Fiona. Welcome my beautiful friend. It's so good to see you all. Apologies. Good morning, joyful Jolene. It's apologies for being a few minutes late this morning. It's taken me a little bit longer to get ready. Um, I am much better. Good morning, beautiful Bertha. Um, I am much better, but not 100%. I am much better than I was, a lot better than I was. Good morning, Magnificent Monica. Um, but definitely not 100%. Um, not quite, not quite my normal wonderful self. Uh, not quite my normal <laughs> sparkly self, should I say. Um, but, but I am a lot better than I was, definitely a lot better than I was. So thank you so much for all of your prayers and all of your support and all of your messages of encouragement and the worship songs and the, all the things that everybody has sent me, uh, to help me to feel better. Honestly, it really, really makes an enormous difference to have a community that is praying for you and standing with you and standing by you. Uh, the I don't think I have to tell any of you, but the good morning, good morning, my beautiful friend, <laughs> heroic Hilda, wonderful Volna. Um, but uh, the warfare around this period has been and is intense. It has been intense. Um, it really. I'm sure that there are many of you who are experiencing um, similar things, but it has been intense. The warfare around, uh, just around my family, my children, um, even my mum, uh, just around everything that, that has been experienced. It has been intense. My health, so many things. And I know, I know that it is because of everything. Good morning, beautiful Conrad. Welcome, my friend. I know it is because of everything that God has. Um, I know that, you know, the bigger the battle, the bigger the breakthrough. Um, and I know that it's because of everything that God has lined up for next year. I know that a large amount of the battle is because of the good morning, Bridgette, beautiful Bridgette. Good morning, gorgeous Curl. I know that it is because of the prophetic school that is going to be launching next year. I know that um, you know there is some there are so many things that God has on the horizon for next year. I know that a lot of it is just the the spiritual atmosphere because of the state of chaos that the world is in, because of uh, because of the, the the natural war on the earth. You know that the spiritual atmosphere the, is is so intense right now, and a lot of it is just that. But it is also just this, this um, just the spiritual battle, this intensity, and the amazing thing, um, not amazing in a good way, <laughs> but amazing in a in a not so good way, is um, that some old giants have raised their heads uh, and this is I'm saying this because uh, 
some of you might be experiencing the same thing and you know because it is the, you know the call on my life is to be authentic and vulnerable on this platform and as open as I can possibly be uh, so that those of you who are experiencing the same thing can be can know that you are not alone in this but I've realized in in sitting with with the Lord this morning and just processing some of the things that have taken place over the last few days and I've recognized that um, I have been um, had surprise attacks by some old giants, a giants that I thought um, I had, not that I thought, giants that I have had victory over, but that I have defeated and have fought those battles, defeated those giants and moved on from that. And they have suddenly reared their heads and I have actually in one instance been taken out by that thing because it was a complete surprise onslaught and I wasn't ready for it. I was not ready for it. I was blindsided by that old giant. And I was sitting with the Lord and just questioning where this came from. Uh, good morning, Zenobia. Welcome, joyful Jen. Um, and I was sitting with the Lord, uh, chatting with him about it, and this morning actually, and I said to him, Lord, I, I, you know, where did that come from? I, I, you know, and repenting for being unprepared. I was, I, I, I re was repenting for being unprepared and repenting for being, you know, just not, not, not ready for that particular battle. And, and obviously I was resting on my laurels where this particular, because I defeated this particular enemy, I assumed that it had been led to rest. But, and then God reminded me that we are at the midpoint of this decade the midpoint of this decade. You know, the decade began in 2020. It begins with the first year. So 2020 was the first year of this decade. You know, 2030 is the first year of the next decade. And if we're looking at it from our Gregorian perspective. So, you know, we, we're at the midpoint of this decade. If we look, if that's how we count our years. Um, in, in terms of our Gregorian calendar, in terms of where we are in the Western world. And you know how many times I have preached the significance of this decade, that this is one of the most significant decades since Jesus walked the earth, and we are at the midpoint. So do not be surprised if some of the giants that you have defeated over the past five years, since the beginning of this decade, if some of those giants raise their heads and come back, just not, they can, you've defeated them, they're done, they're dusted, you've fought those battles and you've won those victories. But they, if they raise their heads and they just, there's just this reminder, they're just coming back to kind of, it's echoes of previous battles echoes of previous battles but they're triggering old wounds they're triggering old wounds and you if you are unprepared they can still take you out not completely not completely but just take you out sideswipe you slightly blindside you and kind of put you on the back foot for a little bit just be ready be ready. I spent time with the Lord. I was just, I repented for being, for being unprepared. And I was just like, Lord, that will never happen again. Be, just because I've defeated a giant and won victory in certain places, I now know that that doesn't mean that those things are just going to lie down and die forever. They know they're defeated. They know that that battle, that that victory has been won by me. They know that. That doesn't mean that every now and again they're not going to rise up and just poke at me. Even if they know that they can't win, they're just going to poke at me. So I just want to remind you of that as, as we are in this, on this last Friday of this year, as we are about to cross over into 2024, into this new year on the Gregorian calendar, I want to just remind you that there might be some old giants that are raising their heads and just having one last go at you, 
you know, one last reminder, one last kind of, they, they're having one last try to sort of drag you back down into some things, pull you back into a fence, you know, and poke at some raw spots. Because even if we won victories, even if we healed, some of us still have some, some raw spots, you know, some tender places in our hearts that are still, you know, the, the skin is still growing over those wounds. And, and then those giants, they've lost and they're done and they're dusted, but they just poke at those raw places a little bit. So this is just a reminder and to never let your guard down, to just constantly be, even if you've won, you've won the battle, you've won the victory, you've celebrated that, that, that is done. It's dusted, it's sealed, but the enemy is a liar and he likes to just come back and poke at you every now and again. You know, just to see if he can get a reaction. And if you're unprepared for that, like I was, then he just kind of blindsides you. And if you're physically weak, because I was physically weak because I've been so ill, so I was even less, you know, I was even more sort of off my game because I was so ill. We'd had, you know, we've had some family stuff going on that it, you know, also kind of, taken me put, put me off my game and so with all of these you know it was like a perfect storm you know a perfect storm so the family stuff going on I was really ill you know all of this perfect storm and in the midst of all of that the enemy just kind of snuck in as he tends to do and kind of brought this old giant up and just poked at some stuff that I have won victory over but there's still some you know just some some places and spaces there that that are kind of a little bit tender still and he kind of pushed on a few triggers and just so just as we cross over into this new year as we as we face this midpoint in this very significant decade just be on your guard don't let this holiday season as i've said so many times before don't let this holiday season put you in a place where you are uh, where you are you know have let your guard down and also don't um, you know, because understand that going into 2024, this midpoint in this decade, we are stepping into um, greater, gr greater and greater plans of God and greater and greater, his greater and greater expectations of us to do the things that he has called us to do. And so the, the you know, the level of resistance in the spirit intensifies as that happens and but remember that the bigger the battle the bigger the breakthrough because god has such enormous plans and so based on all of that welcome everybody that i haven't had an opportunity to say hello to because i was just busy trying to explain all of that to all of you welcome to all of you you are so welcome to activate her with me sally goodwin on this beautiful friday morning this very last Friday of 2023, as we cross over into 2024. The next time we speak, which will be Monday morning at 7 a.m., it will be the 1st of January, 2024. So this is our last conversation in 2023. And we have been speaking recently about, um, you know, we sp we've spoken a lot about, obviously with it being the, Christmas season and we've been celebrating the birth of our Savior and our focus has been so on Jesus which has just been absolutely amazing and we've also been focusing a little bit about um, on, on Mary we've been focusing a little bit on Mary thank you so much Avram I am on my way not there yet but on my way <laughs> good morning Chantal welcome my beautiful friend so We've been focusing a little bit um, on Mary as well and uh, because Mary played an enormously significant part obviously obviously in the birth of Jesus in the bringing of the Messiah to earth Mary played a very significant role and I've, I've and I've said this before and I'm going to say this again that in our efforts as Protestants as um, as people who, you know, in um, 500 odd years ago, moved away from the Catholic 
a faith or the Catholic way of doing things into the Protestant Reformation. We, you know, as we tend to do in the church and church history will teach you this, uh, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, we just completely throw away everything that has been done before, no matter how good or how bad. And uh, we, you know, we and we move into the new. And we often what we do is we idolize um, heroes of the faith, you know, and that goes for biblical heroes of the faith. And I constantly remind people that the only hero in the Bible is Jesus. Uh, all the other people of faith in the Bible that we look up to absolutely the Moseses and the Abrahams and the Davids and you know the the Pauls and all of those people in the Bible that we look up to as heroes of the faith they all had feet of clay none of them were perfect and God used them anyway which is what we draw from that but subsequent to that you know the if you study theology you learn about the church fathers and we have all of these people that we quote you know uh, who who were early um, learned men of God uh, theologians and scholars and we have heroes of the faith like Martin Luther for example who you know spearheaded the the Protestant Reformation with his um, 95 theses and all of that sort of thing but what we don't always know because we're not always taught this is that the Reformation as brilliant as it was in many aspects did not do very much for women in fact in many instances the Reformation worsened the case for women it worsened the lot of women and also Martin Luther was particularly anti-Semitic. He, he, he was. So Martin Luther did many amazing things and um, he, God used him mightily, but he wasn't perfect in any way. And the Protestant Reformation, whilst it was a move of God and it achieved many incredible things, it did not do very much for women. If anything, women were worse off actually after the Protestant Reformation and, um, and anti-Semitism actually spread. So not that the Catholics were particularly in favor of Jewish people. I'm just saying that Martin Luther was particularly anti-Semitic. So we just need to remember these things. We need to look at here are heroes of the faith we need to look at them with a very balanced view viewpoint because we tend to be like that today and we have these people um, in the faith who are we have the celebrity culture that invades the church that pervades the church and so we have these celebrities in church culture that we put on these pedestals and then when when they have feet of clay as everybody does because nobody is perfect you know we are completely distraught and just and we have people who walk away from God and walk away from the church and you know all sorts of horrendous things because you because human beings are proved to be imperfect and because we all are imperfect we are being you know constantly molded to to the image of God but we will only be perfect on the other side of eternity and so, you know, so, so we need to remember things like that and we need to have slightly more balanced viewpoints of things like the Protestant Reformation. And one of the things that happened, and absolutely can I just please do not hear what I am not saying, the deification of Mary or any worship of Mary is incorrect, has always been incorrect, will always be incorrect. Mary was a human being. She was a woman like you and me. But in our move away from that, we have completely forgotten what Mary brought to the earth and how, what, what an incredible woman she was and what she walked through. So we will honor and we will to an extent glorify what the apostles and the disciples walked through to you know to bring what Jesus did to the earth but we will not honor 
and glorify what Mary walked through and her suffering and her sacrifice and her surrender. Because some people somewhere have deified her, deified her. So there needs to be some balance here. And I've, I've preached and prophesied for years about the plumb line that needs to descend into the church, the body of Christ, where we have this balance within the body of Christ, within the church, this balance. And so this is, this is not, this is, this, I want you to understand something that the word I'm going to release today is a word that I happen to be releasing on the last Friday of 2023. And it is a word that I would be releasing on this day, whether it was the last Friday or not. But I am very conscious of the fact that it is the last Friday of 2023 and that we are approaching this midpoint of the decade. So I know that there is something on this, the timing of this word. However, I do not want to specifically say that this is a specific word for 2024 because I do not want you to see it as a word for 2024 and then it's just, then your mind goes, it's for 2024 and then you just, you kind of stop there. I want you to see it as a word for the season that we step into. So we step into the season I don't want you to see it in terms of calendar months. I want you to see it in terms of us as a remnant that God is raising up all around the earth, wherever you are and whatever sphere of influence you're in, whatever space you're occupying. I want you to see it as well, wherever you are crossing over, whatever time zone you occupy, whatever nation you're in, a rather a season or a, a time space than a than a calendar month or a calendar a calendar a specific calendar time because i feel strongly that that is not this so i'm conscious that god is using a time frame to bring this word possibly to kind of speak more deliberately and sort of cement it within our minds as we come to the end of one year and step into another year, as we come to the midpoint of a decade, I feel like that for us kind of solidifies it and, and it helps us to actually remember it rather than just a whole lot of words that have taken place during the year. But I don't want you in your mind to just appropriate it for the year and then be like, okay, when 2025 comes, we'll just move on from this because it's not that. In the same way that the word I released about Shema is a word I want you to carry with you. I want you to carry this word with you. So we've spoken about Mary's fiat, the fiat of Mary. That's what the denominations um, call it. Because fiat is literally a Latin word for let it be. Let it be to me, because that's what it says. Let it be to me according to your word. That's what Mary said to God. And that is what we are stepping into. Radical obedience. Where God is going to say to you, will you do X or Y or Z? And your response needs to be, let it be to me according to your word. Where our, that the Lord's prayer that we have prayed for centuries and centuries and centuries by rote often, by repetition often, without even thinking it or whatever the case may be. But where it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where God is like he's calling in his markers. It's like he's calling in the centuries and centuries of saints who have prayed that prayer, whether they have meant it or not. And he's like, okay, you know what? All of those centuries of those words that have been prayed, that radical obedience, when you have said, my will be done, I'm calling all of that in now. Now is the time. My will be done. So when God says, this is what I'm asking you to do, your response needs to be as Mary's, let it be to me according to your word. And that is from Luke. Luke chapter 1. We spoke about it last time. I can't. Where is the word? 
where is that? Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Now, the next part that I want to focus on is what the denominational liturgical um, spaces call Mary's Magnificat. Mary's Magnificat. And that is the prayer that Mary prayed, or it's called the Song of Mary. That is the prayer that Mary prayed after she'd been to visit Elizabeth, or she, when she goes to visit Elizabeth. She goes to visit Elizabeth and Elizabeth, the baby leaps in Elizabeth's womb as it's filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth says to her, blessed is she who believes for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from God. And so now we are in Luke chapter one, verse 46. And I want you to listen to this. Listen to this. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Mary's Magnificat. These are the words that Mary spoke. The Song of Mary. It's known as the Song of Mary or Mary's Magnificat. What she decreed, what she spoke, what she prophesied. This was Mary prophesying. Because obviously the Holy Spirit came upon all of them. They were all together. Elizabeth and Mary and John the Baptist was in Mary in Elizabeth's womb and Jesus was in Mary's womb and the Holy Spirit was upon John the Baptist leaping in Elizabeth's womb and Elizabeth would have been filled with that same Holy Spirit and Jesus was in Mary's womb and the Holy Spirit would have been present there too so there was just this would have been this presence of the Lord in that space and so Elizabeth is prophesying Mary is prophesying and she speaks these words out. And with all of what she's going to go through, what she would already be going through as this unmarried mother about to bear a child who is not Joseph's, her husband-to-be, who she will raise him for 30 years before he steps into his ministry before he even starts to show signs of being this person that has been prophesied for 30 years. Can you imagine for 30 years what people, what people said? Or how people possibly treated them before Jesus started stepping into his ministry? And then when he started stepping into his ministry and he was this revolutionary and now Mary was the mother of a revolutionary. Now she was the mother of a rebel. Now she was the mother of this person who went completely against the status quo, against the religious leaders of the day, who spoke what some considered to be downright heresy. She was that woman. She was that woman. And then she was the woman who watched her son die on a cross. You know, I think we cannot forget her surrender and her sacrifice. We cannot forget what she endured to bring forth this promise to the earth, this ultimate salvation for the world to bring forth the kingdom. We cannot forget that when God asks us to bring forth the kingdom, 
He doesn't say it will be easy. And yet his expectation is still that we will say, let it be, let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be unto me according to your word. And she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. She is under no illusions about who she is. And then she says, Behold, or henceforth all generations will call me blessed. And when you look at the, the translation or the meaning of that, it says here, that word blessed, the, the, the New King James uh, version, the New King James translation, goes to great pains to explain that verb, blessed. Because it says here, this verse contains one of the most misunderstood words of the New Testament. It is a Greek word which is used repeatedly in the Beatitudes. And it says, the trans, it's translated as all generations will call me blessed. But the literal translation means they shall bless me. All generations shall bless me. And of course, all generations shall bless Mary because she brought forth the Messiah. I mean, that makes perfect sense, does it not? All generations shall bless me. I brought forth the Messiah. The ver that verb bless is often mistranslated as happy. For example, in the original, I think in James Version, it's mistranslated something like we count them happy um, because it's the same word that is used in the Beatitudes. But it has nothing to do with happiness. It has nothing to do with happiness. It is an inequality granted by God. And if you go and you look at the Greek word used, for the Beatitudes. It means to be fully satisfied. It is the term used of the joy that comes from salvation. It is not the result of favorable circumstances. It comes only from being indwelt by Christ. Blessedness is not static, but progressive. The state of blessedness begins the very moment that a person believes in Jesus Christ for salvation. And then it's, the, there's a whole long explanation for it. But basically what they're saying is to be blessed has got nothing to do with being happy. One begins to be blessed the moment one receives Jesus. And then it is a progressive journey as we, pro, as we progress in our relationship with God. We become more and more blessed as we enter more and more into our relationship with him. And so as I, as, I was, as I was just meditating on this, on Mary's Magnificat, on how she said all generations will call me blessed and how actually the translation of that is that all generations will bless me. All generations will bless Mary for what she brought forth to the earth. I act, God took me to that this... God took me to this, to my favorite psalm. And you all know this. You all know that this is one of my favorite psalms because I've preached and prophesied this psalm. Must be for, for five years now, since, since 2019, I have been preaching and prophesying this psalm. And I know that it is, the time has come for this. The time has come for this. I have been preaching and prophesying this psalm for five years now. And it's time has come. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Because blessedness, blessedness is not static. It is progressive. You ascend through states of blessedness. This is not a new agey thing. Please don't go all freaky on me. I'm not preaching new agey stuff here. I'm preaching the word. I'm preaching the word of God. We begin by being blessed as we receive Jesus into our hearts. Our blessedness begins by salvation, but we don't stay there. How often have I explained to you the analogy of the cake? That's like, it's like God gives you this cake 
and then it's like how many pieces of cake would you like and you get to choose do you just take one slice of cake and just simply eat the one slice of cake are you just blessed enough for one slice of cake or do you eat the whole cake and receive the whole blessing and you can't eat the whole cake all in one go you don't fit the whole cake in your mouth you eat it slice by slice or piece by piece it's a progression and it's the same psalm 24 the earth is the lord's the earth is the lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart and I have been prophesying this for five years now that we need to have clean hands and a pure heart that God is exposing that he is cleaning things up and he is starting with his church and he started with his church all of those years ago and he is still busy and there is still more to come and we are going to see more people fall and we are going to see more things exposed and we are it's going to feel like the church is crumbling into the ash but from the ashes the remnants are going to arise those who have clean hands and pure hearts who can ascend the mountain of the Lord and we need to read Psalm 24 alongside Revelations 4 verse 1 that says what does it say in Revelation 4 verse 1 after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven after the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this because God is calling us to come up higher but the only way we can come up higher is with clean hands and a pure heart and the only way we can have clean hands and a pure heart is with radical obedience and the only way we get radical obedience if we can be like Mary and we can say let it be done to me according to your word Lord let it be done to me according to your word Lord for behold henceforth all generations will call me blessed because what is blessedness it is a, it, it is not a static thing it is a progression we progress in blessedness as we are radically obedient to God as we move with clean hands and a pure heart constantly checking our hearts for offense constantly moving in purity constantly asking God to show us our blind spots constantly asking him to show us what are the things we need to change what are the things we need to to move from what are the things we, who are the people we need to move from what are the things we need to be set apart from what are the things that need to be removed from our lives what are the things we need to do what constantly asking him constantly checking with him not from a religious perspective not from a legalistic perspective not because the rules say this or the law say this or the church or my church says this or my pastor says this but because God you say this what do you say God do you say this is something I need to sacrifice do you say this is something I need to surrender do you do you say this is something I need to be set apart from is this you saying this God This is the season to Shema. Are you listening and hearing and obeying? Because it is only when we are in that position of Shema where we can listen, hear, obey, that we can be in that space of Psalm 24, that we can then be those who come up here higher so God can show us what needs to be taking place in the second half of this decade so that we can know our strategies and our plans and our vision for the next five years for where we need to be because there are some of us that need to move from where we are living 
There are some of us that need to move from the communities we are in. There are some of us that need to move from the spaces and the places. There are some of us that we need to be in different spheres of influence. There are some of us that God has been talking to us for ages about moving and we are not moving. And there, for some of us, there has been a grace period where God has given us grace after grace after grace after grace, and that grace period is up. And we have stepped into the space where delayed obedience is now disobedience. Where God has given us chance after chance after chance, warning after warning after warning, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and he is like it is enough now hear me when I say this hear me when I say this it is not that things on the earth are going to get any easier But there are such great and wonderful and magnificent things that God has planned for those whose hearts are fully surrendered and laid down for him. We are going to see God move in the most incredible ways. We are going to see signs and wonders and miracles like never before. But with that comes such surrender and such sacrifice and such a cost and such a price. And God needs to know whether you are prepared to pay it. And none of this can be for your own agenda. None of this can be for your own motivation. Because this next move of God is going to be God's. There is not going to be a person at the front of it. It is not going to be, uh, you know, ascribed to one person or one church or one movement. It is going to be God's. So there is no room for ego. There is no room for pride. There is no room for I need my name to be here. And if it isn't my name here, then I'm not interested. There is no room for that. That is what is falling now. And that is what is going to continue to fall. who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation this is Jacob the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And we are going to be a part of a generation who seek the face of the Lord from a position of being flat on our faces before him. Hear me on this. Hear me on this. We are going to be a part 
of a generation who seek the Lord from a position of being flat on our faces before him because the weightiness of the presence will not allow us to stand in any other way. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. There is only room for one King of glory. There is only room for one Lord of hosts. And God is not a God who likes competition. And he is done competing for space in our lives. He is done competing for space in our lives. He is raising up a remnant around the earth who are sold out for him. Clean hands, pure hearts, where he doesn't compete for space in their lives. Ones who lie prostrate before him in the weightiness of his presence, who walk in radical obedience. So if you take anything into this next year, into the second half of this decade, Or the mid year, should I say, into this, the mid part of this decade. Shema. Psalm 24 and Revelation 4, verse 1. We have to Shema to ascend the hill of the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart, to be those who come up higher and watch and see what the Lord will do. We have to be those. We have to be those. Mary's Magnificat, I'm going to end with this. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Pay attention to that. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. So those who are proud in here, they might not come across as proud, but in their hearts, they have their own agenda. They have their own motivation. Hidden agendas, hidden motivations are being exposed and will continue to be exposed and God will scatter them. He has put down the mighty from their thrones. Many have been toppled and will continue to be toppled and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. 
God will always help his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Remember, we are also the seed of Abraham. All of us. We are also the seed of Abraham. Forever. So, as we enter into this year, 2024, this mid-year of this decade, let us meditate on this. Really meditate on this. Let us repent where we need to repent. Let us forgive where we need to forgive. Let us release any offense that we might be carrying. Because I don't know about you, but I want to be. I want to be like Mary. I want to say, let it be. Let it be to me, according to your word, Lord. I want to be those who ascend the mountain of the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart. I want to be one of those who comes up higher and sees what is to come. No matter the cost, no matter the price, no matter the sacrifice. And I don't say that lightly because I know firsthand what that looks like. So, I bless you all on this beautiful Friday. And I trust that you will have a wonderful weekend. And that you will have a beautiful New Year's Eve. Be safe, be careful, be enormously blessed. And I will see you on the 1st of January, 2024, at 7am. Bless you, love you, see you then.